Hello, it's Joey, and today we are making these lovely envelope journals with three pockets one, two, and three, and lots of goodies and decoration on the inside. And what's absolutely great about these is they are incredibly simple to make, and they're made from just three envelopes like these. You could also use your junk mail envelopes. You just need two large ones and a small one. And this envelope journal is also upcycling, so you're using your Amazon packing paper to line the inside. I've covered the outside with beautiful papers. Mine's a botanical theme, and I, I wonder what theme you would choose for yours. I've decorated the inside with some extras. So I have a notepad on the right here with a very pretty gold brad and a few pages behind. I have another pocket here with lots of papery goodies inside it and a few more decorative elements all over. There's a pocket on the right hand side, a large one. You could put items in that. I've got a pocket at the top and also a pocket at the top of this smaller one here. The closure on this envelope journal is really easy to. It's an eyelet that I've added with a piece of ribbon and as we go through this I will show you the instructions and you'll be able to take a screenshot of these and use it so that you can make these too. So subscribe, hit the notification bell and let's make these lovely envelope journals. So the first thing I'm going to do to make the structure of the envelope journal is glue three envelopes together. Let's just show you on this six step process. Number one, glue three envelopes. I'll take you through all six steps as we go. I've got two envelopes that I bought in a cheap Poundland store recently, so I'm sure you can get access to those. And I'm also going to use a junk mail envelope just to show that that can be used too. So I'll make a bit of space and it's very, very simple. I need a large one for the middle of the back. So that's for this piece here. I'm just going to attach one here and one here. And I'll do that by putting the larger one on the right hand side. I'm going to, this one has one of those peel offs. Tear that off and just tuck that into the inside of this envelope. And I want to make sure that before I stick anything to anything, I've got the edge of this envelope butting neatly into the flap of the one underneath. So that's in a good position. What I will do is allow these to attach to each other by just folding that one down. Envelopes come in all different designs. The point is that we're going to tuck the flap of one from the right into the entry point of the envelope into the inside on the left. So I've immediately got two and I can take this flap and also stick that down. So I'll do that with a little bit of glue like that. These two envelopes are both a similar size and when we use our junk mail envelopes you might find that these envelopes are of different sizes and that's absolutely fine too. Really all you want is two relatively large ones and the ability to tuck one into the other. On the left hand side I'm going to take a little envelope and attach that by adding a little bit of glue to the hole of the flap. So I don't want to just use where the glue is on the envelope flap, I want that to be firmly attached. And we're going to add that not quite in the middle of this edge, I like to go a little bit lower. So that can go on there. Press that down. So what we've got is three envelopes attached to each other and in each of these cases I had the back of the envelope facing towards me. The back of the envelope, the back of the envelope and the back of the envelope. Very easy. That is the structure 
of our envelope journal. Let me just tell you the size of the envelopes that I've used in case that helps you. So I have used a couple that are roughly 22 centimetres by 11 centimetres. These two are very similar. And then this little one on the left for variety is about 9 centimetres by 15 centimetres. And that gives you the structure for all of this. How easy was that? Step two in the process is covering the envelopes. So that means covering the inside with packing paper and also covering the outside with whatever papers you want. And I'm going to use just a single sheet of A4 digi paper and I'll tell you all about the patterns and where I get these papers from as we get to that. I'm also going to cover the small flap here with a bit of decorative paper. So let's just set that aside and we're going to do cover the inside, cover the outside and cover the small flap and maybe add a few little bits of washi tape to fill in any gaps. So let me just take you through that. It's a great chance to use all of that packing paper that we steal and put away like this that comes with Amazon or maybe Ikea and what I'm going to do is add it to the inside of our journal folder. So this is the outside that we're going to cover with pretty papers and this is the inside, the one, the side with the access to the envelopes. And the key to adding this packing paper is not only to put lots of glue on, so do be a little bit liberal as you do this, but do avoid putting glue anywhere which effectively is the front of the journal. And by that I mean, let me say, this hash, glue hash pattern here is the inside of the front of this envelope. Don't put glue on that. Equally, this blue is the front of the folder. Don't put glue on that. And the reason I say that is if you did put glue on, you'd effectively be sticking the back of the journal to the front and that would limit the size of the pockets that we're going to create with these. So we're going to add lining to our journal folder to the interior in a way that makes the pockets, those three pockets, as big and as useful and as fun as possible. And that's just one of the little tips for adding the various bits of paper which add robustness to this journal folder. Now I've got plenty on there, I think that's good enough. So what I'll do, take my packing paper which is creased and that's fine, that doesn't matter, and I'll just get that onto my envelopes. And it does seem to be, handily, very luckily, that the width of these packing papers is about right for covering up three envelope widths. I'm just smoothing that down and of course it's larger than my envelopes and that's absolutely fine, that's what we want. If we turn it over we can see that we've got some extra obviously all the way around and we're going to do a little bit of a, a job to trim this down and fold it all over. It's a bit like wrapping a Christmas present, that's the best way I can describe it. Tear off some of the excess and we're going to use some of these pieces too. Tear off this great piece here. I've reduced it down a little bit and now what we're going to do is the parcel wrapping service and fold in the edges all the way around it and again a little bit of technique I've developed as I've made a few of these is to begin by just making a bit of a cut on the side here at an angle so remember when you're your wrapping parcels at Christmas, you can sometimes use this technique where you just take a bit off and start with that. So I think what I'll also do is make the creases a little bit clearer. So before we start that wrapping, let's just find our folds where the envelope hinges are, where the, the top of the envelopes are. Just make those a bit clearer. Let's help ourselves turn it round, do the same again, find 
where that envelope flap is and fold that over. It's just going to make it a bit easier as we fold in all of this packing paper. And once the wrapping is done with this packing paper, we're really on the home straight. This is probably the hardest part of the process and I still think it's quite fun and rewarding. So let me turn it over, go back to where the top should be and start the folding and wrapping service. So we've made a cut at an angle, I've made a cut at an angle and I'm going to just start gluing some of these on. Bit of glue on here bring that flap over like that. Then I want to bring these side pieces down to wrap there. So I'm going to make a cut all the way to the inner part of this right angle. Let me show you. So I've made a cut all the way up to the inside of that corner there and I'll do the same at the top here. And again, these are the hardest parts, so stick with it and you end up with something absolutely stunning. So I'm going to fold this in and I suspect I've not gone quite as far to the corner there as I can. So just to make life a bit easier. Take a bit more off. Then I'm going to fold these in and glue those down. And don't worry about the ugliness of any of these pieces because they're going to get covered up. So let's put, oh, glue's running out. Let's put a bit of glue on here, bring that down. If you can wrap a Christmas present you can do this. And you use up all of that lovely Amazon packing paper too, what a great use of it. Do you have any? Has it been filling your craft room? It's quite voluminous. So one envelope done, we're just going to work our way round. So I think I will do some of this side. Let's turn it round and effectively do the same again. Snip my corners to make life easy. And then we'll fold this over. Put a glue on there. Fold that in. And you can see that I need to do something about allowing these flaps to come in easily. So at this point what I do is take a little piece of pie, a little piece of paper, just a little wedge out of the top and the bottom at the point where we have made a fold. And all that does is allow us to fold in these flaps like that. So very common sense. Let's add a bit of glue to these. Fold those in. You can see it's coming together can't we? If we have an extra piece like this that's just a bit too big, just trim it down like that. So take a bit more of that off. And then we'll glue this down. So there's a little bit of method in the gluing down of the flaps. I'm not going to say it's that difficult but I think an approach like this is helpful just to get there. So now what I need is to fold these two pieces in this way, so sort of horizontally. So I am going to make life easy again, trim those like that, so a slanted trim again and that means I can fold these side flaps in just like that. So we're just using a few little cuts to help the wrapping process be done. There we go we're so nearly there. So now it's really easy just to fold in the top and the bottom. So that can go over there 
and we've stuck everything down. So now we've got our three envelopes, one, two, three, small, two larger ones and everything is wrapped and sealed. The next thing I'm going to do is cover the outside of our envelope journal with pattern paper. So we've glued the envelopes together, we've covered the inside with packing paper, we're now going to add some decoration to the outside and the papers that I'm using today come from a collection from Jessica and Tracy, so that is Two Silver Oranges and Tracy Fox Love Junk Journals if you want to find them on Etsy. I'm going to use this absolutely glorious piece of vintage botanical today but there are other beautiful papers in those two collections so I do encourage you to have a look and see if these are your kind of thing. Some thistles with beautiful greens, I like the flash of blue, I love the text behind which you, you don't really see until you have a second look. They're absolutely gorgeous and they work really well with this journal folder I think but you can use whatever papers you have. What I do like is that they are upright in design, so the design is intentionally meant to be portrait, I think that's the word, and I've printed these on 90 GSM paper, so a little bit thicker than, let's see how much I need to go down to there, a little bit thicker and more robust than an 80 GSM, it just seems to make a little bit of difference. And I'm trying to get the glue all the way to the edge. So just take your glue all the way around it. And you'll see that this A4 piece of paper that I'm using, that I've printed on, falls just a little bit short widthwise compared with the width of the main block, the main area of our envelope journal. And that's fine. So what I've done if I, is I've accepted that our envelopes are all different sizes and so we're not going to worry too much about picking specific envelope sizes to make the main journal folder. What we're going to do is some cheeky adjustments with our decoration just to accommodate that. So I have got, there we go, right to the corner. I've got a really nice piece of decorative paper on the back here and it's fallen short widthwise just here. That's fairly damp. I do need to be, I guess, aware of that as I'm trimming and cutting a bit later as we trim it down. Maybe just take a ruler and flatten that off. Just try and get it as close to the edge. There we go. Fantastic. And it's coming together. I'm just going to say, I made a mistake earlier on. I'm just keeping it absolutely real and I attached one of these to the inside. I peeled it off quickly because it needs to go on the outside but it doesn't really matter because we're going to cover all of the inside with beautiful things anyway. Not everything goes right all the time, certainly at my craft desk. Don't know about you, I make loads of mistakes. I make loads of mistakes. There we are. I hope that's not a mistake. Trim that off and keep this spare piece because we're going to use that as well. So what have we got? We've got the back decorated, apart from the small flap, which I also need to cover with packing paper and then add something decorative on top as well. So let's do that and that's where we do something to deal with these spare pieces here that are visible. So I'm going to take a piece of packing paper, is that long enough now, and get another piece. Right. I want a piece to stick on here, which is going to overlap my main decorative sheet. All I'm going to do is just stick that down on here. Again, I'm going to go all the way to the edge, so get that on there. And I'm going to stick this down. So it will overlap my main decorative piece and I was a bit rough and ready when I tore that. So I'm going to now just reduce some of this because I don't want to cover up quite so much of that pretty paper. I just want to make sure it covers up the gap. So thumb on the paper and tear down 
and that makes for something that covers up those spaces. And now what I'm going to do is add a piece on here to cover up this white. So this one might work. Yes, so I'm going to get some glue on here and effectively cover up this straight line here and all of this white. So it's a little bit of a gluing and a patching job, but this really is the hardest element, the, the covering up like that. And I'm just going to stick a piece of packing paper on top of here, like that. Just tear it down a little bit so we're not covering up too much of our pattern paper. Take that down and we'll do the cheeky parcel wrapping service just to bring this all together. So I'm just going to glue these extra bits of flap over, in and over, fold them in, fold it over, fold over. And what we have got is an exterior, just like this, ready for a little bit of a decorative element to be added on the outside of our small flap. A beautiful postcard here that I've printed out and I think this is a Victoria Designs piece so I'll have a bit of glue on that. I know that I'm going to trim across the top of here to make this envelope into a pocket so knowing that I'm going to position that down just a little bit further than I otherwise would so there's a bit more space up here, not a lot stick that down and the other thing I like to do is add just something to break up this line here so I'm going to play with a few new bits of washi tape so these are from Stationery Pal they kindly sent me a few washi tapes and I just think look at these look at the colours that's just what came with it these colours these neutrals and the pinks I'll show you the whole box these are incredibly useful colours, these neutrals, for playing with our decoration. So I'm just going to have to pick one of these, a little piece from here, tear a bit off. I want a raggedy edge, so I'll split it down the middle. That can go on there. I'll have mirror it. I'll just have a little bit down here, like that and I'm going to have a little bit of decoration. Should we have blue or green? Which do you think? I think both of those go, don't they? I think I'll have the green, I like the shape of that. This is a tiny bit of label from Tracy Fox. I think that just helps there. Beautiful. And that is the outside decorated. We've constructed the envelopes, we've put three envelopes together, we've added the inside packing and we've added the external decoration. I'm just going to refold so I can see exactly where those lines are, keep that crisp and then we'll move on to decorating the inside. The next thing we're going to do is a little bit of trimming to make those three pockets. So we want pockets to be on the right hand side here, that's a nice big one, I want a pocket on the top here and I want a pocket on the top of this small flap here. And I've found that the best way, so we're doing step three, trim to make three pockets on the long side and two tops. The best way I've found is actually to use scissors, particularly if you're doing this at a stage where it's still quite damp. So I want to take some off the top here, some off the top here, and take some off the side. So I'm gonna trust my hand on this one and do just a little bit of work with a pair of scissors. You want a very narrow slice and that's all you need for each of these pockets. So I've got a 
pocket there, so I've just done a, a cut, got a pocket there. I'm going to take a similar little sliver off the top of my middle pocket. So trying to be, trying to work in a straight line. I do think it's easier than working on a trimmer, but you can have a go. Let me know how that works. For me, because I'm doing this while it's slightly damp, it stops it all just ruching up on the trimmer. And I think you can be quite accurate with a pair of scissors. So I've got a pocket in the middle now, and this is where you can see that it was helpful to not glue the back to the front, as I mentioned at the beginning. I've got a pocket there, and I also want a pocket on the side, so I'm going to trim all the way down there. Again, just a narrow sliver. Take it slowly, take your time, line up your scissors, and just take a tiny amount off. And that gives us pocket here, a pocket in the middle and a pocket on the top of our small envelope, just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is decorate the inside of the envelope journal. So we have added decoration to the outside of the small flap, we've actually done step four. So we're going to do the inside which is step five. So let's turn it over and the first thing I'm going to do is add the rest of this piece of paper that we cut off when we trimmed the outside to the top and the bottom of our journal folder, just on the inside. And I think this is a great way of using up our scraps too. So I'm going to glue that on the bottom. That can go, oh come on. Again, plenty of glue. That can go on the bottom of our interior just on here and again it's going to fall a bit short that's okay because we'll do a patch up job with some other paper or washi so that can go on there and I'm going to give this a border at the top and you'll notice because we made an indentation at the top here with our scissors to make the pocket that this falls a little bit shorter compared with the height of this one I'm going to put the piece of paper down when I line this so that it does fall over so that is beyond where that pocket starts. So I'll just trim that down and tuck it in in a minute. So I'm going to take this all the way to the top right here which means it goes a little bit beyond this one because I trimmed it down like that. And what I'll do can see an extra bit of white peeping out there. I'm going to tuck it in. So this is the neatest way that I've found of doing it. I make a little bit of a snip, open up the pocket and just fold that in. So it needs a bit of, needs a little bit of glue on the inside of this pocket. Just turn that in and I think it's a bit neater than just cutting it off like that. So that goes in really easily and compress that down. So now I'm going to use my washi again to fill in the gaps. So using washi, I've just picked one of those Station Repel pieces and that can just fill the gap and it's absolutely fantastic this stuff for just making projects work and adding that little bit of extra detail which I really like. I like the shades. These neutrals are very helpful. Right, I've gone over a bit trim that off and now we can add some extra elements so why don't I start on the right hand side and I'm going to add a little notebook I've been making these up they're just little collections of papers beautiful papers that go with the rest of the botanical theme and I've added a brad to hold it all together I put a little bit more of the Amazon packing paper and some more washi so it's this pink one on the top just to hold it together. So I'll put a bit of glue on the back of this just to hold it on. And that can go on the right hand side. Just make sure that we're not covering up the fold. I think that can go at the top. And immediately what I start to see is a bit of extra space down here. So I'm just going to add a little label there 
just something in the theme. Oops, it's a Tracy Fox label just to break it up. Put that there, just like that. Yep, I like that. On the middle here, I thought I'd have a pocket that we could fill with goodies. So I've made up just a couple of basic pockets and I do have videos on my channel making three really, really easy pockets, including one of these. So I'll leave links to useful videos in the video description box down below. So I've just decorated it with, I think this is from a Victoria Designs piece and this is also, I think, from the Tracy Fox and Two Silver Oranges kit. So I've just added a bit more colour, a bit more of that botanical theme and that can go on and I think again I'm going to add something behind just to break up this line. So let me take, let's find a, a little label just to break that up, I like that, I like the text running vertically rather than horizontally, that's good. A bit more on there. And that can go down. Again, making sure that this is not too far to the right so that it's not in the way of that fold. So that's good. A bit more glue there. We'll fill it in a minute with some goodies. And on the left, I'm going to take the other half of this little piece that I ripped off. That can go on there. breaking up all of these empty spaces now. I think I'll have a bit of washi underneath it again in this same neutral colour. That there. I'll have a bit of this. I like this one. It's got dots and lines on it. Just a little bit up there. Something vertical. And I've got a an Artie Mays beautiful butterfly which I thought would go with this theme. I think I need glue on the antennae to keep them down and again I'm going to be careful that it's not in the way of the fold. So I also want to see as much of that text as possible. I think that will just work. That works there. They're coming together. I think I'm going to add a few tiny bits, that was helpful. A few tiny bits of pink in interesting places. And again I like the squares on this. That goes with the theme. So I want to break something up down here as a line. I've got quite a bit of space here. So I'll just have a, a little piece there and maybe break up that so the label joins to the base. I'll add a few little bits inside it. So whatever you've got, let's try that one. Let's try that one. These are the off cuts from my little project from last week. So they can go in just whatever you've got. And all I need to do now is add the eyelet and the ribbon to finish it off. So I'm going to add the closure just to allow us to add a ribbon to hold it all together. And I need this to be obviously in the middle of this back piece. So I will just turn this over and measure this. I think this is about 22 centimetres. Yeah, so I'm going to make a mark at 11. That can go there. And I'll make a hole just in the back side, so obviously not on the inside as well. So I'll make a hole with the right part of my proper dial. Move that in. There is plenty of space to get it in to do it. So that can go about there. And I'll add an eyelet. That can go through. And I'll just crunchify that and flatten the back. Press. Done. And I have a piece of ribbon which is actually something that came off a a pack of cards that are bought, so I like to collect and reuse as much as possible. And 
and I'm going to just push that through from the inside. I'm not sure which is the best way to do this. Is it outside in or inside out? Let me know down below what should I be doing to bring that through. And this is my envelope journal with three pockets and some lovely decorative elements and ephemera. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this and do subscribe if you'd like to see more. And if you've enjoyed seeing me make this, then take a look at my previous video where I made these little pocket flips from envelopes as well with these pretty little birds. I think you'd really enjoy having a go at making those. Have a go at the journal folder and I do hope to see you soon.